Hey guys, Virtue Bro here with a quick guide to help you attain that elusive secret ending, sometimes referred to as true neutral. Though with this guide, hopefully you'll be able to experience it for yourself and determine if that is an accurate label. I'm going to present this information to you in tiers of escalating spoilers. The beginning will be as minimal of spoilers as possible and as we go from there, there will be more and more spoilers as we get more in depth. Though my goal is only to discuss what's absolutely necessary so you can best experience this yourself. Before I even jump into the details, I will say, if you do all the side quests and make generally ethical, humane decisions, you will likely unlock this route naturally, though actually triggering the true epilogue may take some trial and error. It did for me. Also, just a general tip, don't panic if a mandatory quest isn't showing up on the map preview window for you. Sometimes you just have to get close enough for it to show up on the map. Okay, so the first question you probably have is whether or not you've locked yourself out of this ending. Good news is that you likely have not, as long as you didn't finish the final dungeon, maze, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if you have a save file before the big sequence of events that takes place at the end there, you're likely okay. Also, it is a myth that New Game Plus is required. I was able to get this ending on my first playthrough. If you're a Megaton fan, you're probably worried about alignment locking choices. You don't need to worry about any decisions you made during the main story. However, there are four major quest lines that seem to be necessary to complete in order to unlock this secret route. And two of them involve multiple decisions. Now, some of those decisions don't seem to have an impact, and the quest will proceed as it would regardless of what decision you make. However, there are some decisions that do, and I'll go back to what I said earlier. Be a good human being. If you have the option to show mercy or be an evil bastard, go the mercy route. If you have a friend in need, stick up for them no matter how obnoxious they may be. Okay, here's your warning. We're ramping up the spoilers. If you don't want to do every single quest in the game, that's okay. But from what I've experienced and what others in the community seem to agree on is that at the very minimum, you need to complete the Fairy Village quest, including the one from Kelpie in the third area. You'll also need to complete quests involving Amanozako, Kanzu, and Demeter. Amanazako's questline can be started by talking to the Kurama Tengu in the fourth area. If you've been paying attention to Amanazako's strange behavior throughout the game, whenever one of those dudes pops up, well, you're about to see why. This questline is pretty easy, but there's one very important decision near the end. When faced with the choice to hand over Amanazako to the Tengu, don't. Simple as that. Be a good friend, even to the most annoying of your friends. The Fairy Village quest seem to tie into two very important quest lines for this route. Complete every quest in the Fairy Village, including the one I mentioned earlier with Kelpie in the third area. In the fourth area, you'll get a quest from a Dominion Angel south of the Ueno Ley Line, asking you to deal with the Egyptian gods. It'll take you back to the very first area with a newly opened up Ley Line. Go there, fight Kansu, and spare him. This is important. You must show mercy to him or you will lock yourself out of the rest of the quest and the true ending. After this, you should be able to grab another quest from Amon to retrieve the Winged Sun. He's in the fourth area. Beat up some bosses, get new fusions as your rewards, and at the end, Kanzu will make an appearance taking the Winged Sun with him. If you've done the other Fairy Village quest, you should have a new quest back where you first fought Kanzu in the secret part of the first area. That quest will send you back to the Fairy Village where you'll take on a pretty tough boss and need to make another choice. I don't know if this final choice in this quest line matters, but uh, be a good human being just in case. After completing all of this, you'll unlock a new quest in the fourth area near the abscess where you fight the level 99 starter demons. Find Fionn Makumail, and I'm so sorry I probably butchered that pronunciation. If you've done everything right thus far, he should commend you, then fight you. Win and he'll join your team and you can check this box off.
Demeter's quests are pretty straightforward, and I'm not even 100% sure they're necessary for this route, but you may as well do them just in case. You'll first encounter her in the second area where she asks you to take out Belphegor. Dude's just trying to do his business, why are we so dang pushy? Anyways, she'll continue to give you quests throughout the third and fourth areas, ending with one where you'll battle Baal, or Bale, I'm not sure how you pronounce that, back in area two. Turn in that quest and you're done. Double check that you've completed the Bull God's lineage. If you have, you're all done with Demeter, for now at least. Okay, finally, the toughest challenge yet. You need to beat the game's super boss, Shiva. You have to be level 80 to even have the option to take him on, but unless you're going to drop the difficulty, you're going to want to bring a main character that's near the level cap with several powerful endgame demons. There's plenty of guides for this boss, so I won't go into too much detail here. Just uh, beat him and claim your prize. You're now ready to proceed to the final area and sequence of events. Spoiler warning, I'm telling you maybe the best way to do this is to create a save file at the last ley line in the final dungeon and experiment for yourself. It's honestly not too challenging to figure this part out alone and you'll be thankful that you have this save if you mess something up and need to finish a quest or just want to check out the other endings. If you are still stuck then stick around past the spoiler countdown and we'll walk through it together. <laughs> Okay, here it is. On the fourth floor of the Temple of Eternity, proceed through the big fancy doors and watch the dramatic cutscenes play out. When it's decision time, choose to destroy the throne. Proceed through the short path to the throne area until you get to the second ley line. Note that you should see a quest from Demeter on the way there. Complete that as you go through it. Be ready for a boss fight when you talk to Demeter. Save and proceed at that ley line and then beat the first boss. Here it is. If you've done everything right, a new cutscene will play in which Nua reveals her and Yakubo's true goal. At this point, I'd go back and save again at the ley line. Heal up and get ready to throw down. You'll be faced with one more decision at this point. You can choose to destroy the throne still, or you can choose to create a world for humanity alone. Choose to create a world for humanity alone, and congratulations, you put yourself on the path to the true neutral ending. I'm going to end the video here so you can experience this awesome sequence of events yourself. I hope this was helpful and got you through some of the more cryptic parts of this ending route. If you already got some of the other endings, then I think you're in for a treat with this one. It's tough to unlock with Shiva alone being a huge roadblock, but if you're a Mega Ten fan, then I think you'll agree it's worth it. If anyone has any additional info or if I was off on some of the details, please share in the comments section while being mindful to avoid unnecessarily spoiling others. Thanks for watching. If this helped you, then please consider hitting that like button. Subscribe if you want more content about JRPGs, though you can mostly catch me streaming Friday through Sunday on twitch.tv slash Your support is greatly appreciated, and I hope you all have a wonderful day. Bye now.